Crush it. Crush it. Crush it. Shake and bake it. Pull it back. Oh, my God. Legends of the universe. Their mission to fight injustice, to right that which is wrong, and to serve all mankind. What's going on, you Tupanites? Welcome to Lords of the Long Box and a long overdue. CGC unboxing comic book haul. I'm not going to do like what everybody else does and pretend like, you know, I don't know what the grades are because I don't <laughs> I don't know about you, but as soon as I get the grades, I need to know them ASAP. So I'm just going to show them as is. Um, so this is about a 17 book submission. Um, there's highs, there's lows, middle ground, but you know, overall I'm happy. So so we see what we have today, boys and girls. Um, so let's start off first. Uh, let's see what we have here. This is Darth Vader number three, first appearance of Dr. Afro. This is the second printing and uh, damn, 9.0. A little disappointed in that, but you know, we shall see, man. Um, you know, I submitted a few of these, so um, you know, like I always say, man, sometimes in a modern book, you know, you know anything less than a 9.6, 9.8 is a kiss of death. But, hey, maybe the scarcity of it. Uh, if their character ever comes, you never know. Um, speaking of Dr. Afra, let's see what else we have here. We have about 16, 17 books. Let's go with this. This way. Next up is Darth Vader number three. This is the uh, regular cover. First appearance of Dr. Afra, triple zero, triple zero, 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 and BT-1. And a 9.6, you know, I, you know, and I'm, you know, I didn't expect a 9.8. There were some imperfections on there, but it's, uh, you know, I'm happy with 9.6, better than 9.4. Um, these have been, sit I bought these right off the shelf and they've been sitting in my, um, my long boxes for quite a while now, so, you know, what are you going to do? But it's still good. I'm happy with the 9.6. Uh, next up is Darth Vader number three. This is the actual variant edition. If you remember this one. 9.6. Can't complain. Would have liked the 9.8. But, you know, hey, what are you going to do, man? Um, on a modern book, sometimes they're just, you know, come from the manufacturer that way. Uh, my man, uh, Key Collectibles, uh, on Instagram and Facebook, pressed and submitted these for me. So, um, like I said, you know, I, I probably should have, you know, never even dawned on me to go and get these slab until Star Wars books started getting crazy. So, I'm cool with it. As um, soon as he shows up on screen, it'll be for sale. Uh, next up is a book I've been specking on for a long time now, Star Wars. Heir to the Empire. First, a comic book appearance of Mara Jade um, and Admiral Thrawn. This is a 9.8. Now that I'm stoked for. Um, it's about a $1,000, $1,500 book. The newsstand is what really goes for big dollars but uh yeah not a new stand but i'm down with the 9.8 man so yeah i have the whole series actually so stop at the entire run of star wars heir to the empire so who knows if there's other hidden gems in there but uh yeah as soon as they announced thrawn you guys should have been buying these up man or said the word thrawn. excuse me uh next up there's two books that i've been sitting i've had in my collection since they came off the shelf Ultimate Fallout, Spider-Man, no more. First parents of the new Spider-Man, Miles Morales. 
in the poly bag, 9.4. A little disappointing, but I, I kind of knew it because there's a uh, crease right there and right there. So actually, I'm surprised it got to 9.4, to be honest with you. When I when I took these out of the poly bag, I looked at them and was like, damn it. I should have took them out sooner. Um, but, you know, hey, this book's on fire. Uh, and I actually submitted two of them. Uh, the other one got a 9.6, Ultimate Fallout number four, first appearance of the new Spider Man, Miles Morales. So I'm cool with that. Not a 9.8, not the uh, not the variant, but you know what? When there's a, whenever this comes live action, so maybe I'll sell the 9.4 now and I'll keep the 9.6. Would be nice to get a 9.8, but uh, I'm not going to go out and buy a 9.8 nowadays because uh, they are pricey. Uh, next up is Thor number two. Everybody's talking about Gore the God Butcher. I was collecting this Thor God of Thunder run for the longest time. Didn't even know I had some gold in them to heal. So uh, 9.6. Uh, I'm cool with that. Um, first appearance of Gore the God Butcher and the all black Necro Sword. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I'm a huge Fort Thor fan. So I was collecting the entire run. So, you know. I'm cool with this, man. Um, like I said, a lot of times you just sit, you know, the difference between 9.6 and a 9.8 is if somebody had a, you know, a good meal and woke up on the right side of the bed as opposed to waking up on the wrong side of the bed. So um, I'm pretty sure when the first trailer drops, this book will go nuclear. So expect me to sell it on my slabs as soon as the, the trailer drops, whatever that is. Uh, I, I think I originally bought this... I don't know where I bought this. I think I either bought this at my LCS when it first came out or I just bought it at Comics, Tunes, and Toys. But uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man number 365. First appearance of Spider-Man 2099. You guys don't know what it is. 9.6? No, or excuse me, 9.4 near mint. Not so bad. You know, I don't care. It's hard to press this book too, by the way. This stupid uh, uh, graphic in the middle, man. But um, um, you know what? For the size that it is, it is a gigantic book, man. Um, but you know what? What are you gonna do? I would. I mean, I've been sitting on this book for a while now, so you know. And I and I promised myself I was gonna get books graded, and I slack. And grading and slabbing and selling is all about timing, man. We talked about it on our show all the time. It's all about timing on when you need to get um, when you should slap things and sell things. Methinks when uh, Spider-Man 2099 appears into the animated sequel, this book will pop, even though it's a huge print run. Uh, look at this. A DC book. That's right. Dory the Nightmare. This is from 1978. This is a first appearance of Man of Xanadu. 9.4. Now this I'm stoked for. Uh, 9.4 from 1978. I'll take it, man. You don't see many, uh, you know, high grades on these. At least I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, rumored to be coming to HBO Max, Madam Xanadu. This is the first appearance. Go away to Nightmare number one from 1978. You know, if you get a book from 1978, 9.4, that's near mint, baby. I'll take it. Okay, next up is uh, some disappointments. <laughs> I sh uh, Gala this is one of my favorite books, by the way. This is the uh, the origin of Galactus. This is super villain classics. Galactus, the origin, number one. Kind of tells the whole story of uh, Galactus before he became Galactus. For the first time, one volume. The Lee Kirby masterwork. Um, I didn't see it. Uh, when I sent it to my presser and he said, hey, you sure you want to submit this? There's got some things in this. You know, go ahead. You know what? I'd rather have it slabbed than not. Um, so this is, I think, a slept on book. If you find this in a high grade, you know, everybody gets the FF 48, 49. But this is another great um, story here that tells the origin of uh, Galactus. So I would look out for that. And being that we're in the time of Moon Knight... That's right, Moon Knight number one. This one is a part one of the origin of Moon Knight. First appearance of Raoul the Bushman. So I don't know. I don't think the Bushman has shown up yet, to be honest with you. Uh, but 9.0, um, yeah. I knew this one was beat up, but right now, 
Moon Knight is hot as hell, so why not, man? I have some modern Moon Knights I think I'm going to try to slab to. I think I got the the entire um, <clears throat> uh, plat run, I think that is uh, beating up, really heating up right now. I'll probably give that a shot, but you know, Moon Knight 9.0, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I, I don't bitch and moan. I go all over. <laughs> I go bitch and moan about this one, though. Uh, this one I for sure thought was going to be a 9.6. Um, came back a 9.0. Damn. I might as well wait for the next McFarland uh, signing and uh, crack it and have him sign it and uh, and resubmit it. So uh, obviously this is classic Hulk versus Wolverine cover. Uh, Incredible Hulk number 340. In a 9.8, this book gets pretty good money. Don't know what it gets in a 9.0, but... Uh, yeah, what are you going to do? You know, it's just part of the game. We all play it, man. But uh, let me see a closer inspection. Just one little break here. Yeah. Yeah, I was hoping for this in a 9.6 because this book in high... This is one of those books that is a huge drop between like a 9.0 and 9.6 and 9.8. So... Uh, but still classic Todd McFarlane, man. What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Okay. What's up? Hey, a modern book. And DC. What? Yeah, Noctera has been an uh, option. Uh, this is Noctera number one from Image Comics. Uh, 9.6 white pages. So I was like, it's sitting here. Why not just slab it? So when, uh, you know, when the show does come out, I'm going to sell it. That's right. This is a tonal uh, cover by Tony S. Daniel, which was uh, one of the uh, my favorite artists uh, back in the day uh, when he was with Image in the 90s. Fast forward to he's in Image in 2021. So, yeah. Good look, I hope that Noctera gets the, the proper treatment that it does, as so many books now do nowadays. Um... This one's been sitting here for a while. I should have gotten graded a while ago. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16. The first origin, the first appearance of the new Captain Marvel Manacle Rambo. And depending on who or what you believe in the uh, Multiverse of Madness trailer, this may or may not be her, but I think it's still a good key issue. I think uh, they're going to be doing a lot of big things with this character going forward in the MCU. So, yeah, trying to slab this bad boy. It was a whole buck back then. Wow. So Amazing Spider-Man Annual number 16 from 1982. 9.4. Uh, I should have put this with the other ones, but this is, uh, you know, another hot book in the Miles Morales. This is his first uh, ongoing uh, solo series, the all-new Spider-Man, Ultimate, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. 9.6. If you can't get Ultimate Fallout 4, then get this one. This entire run is pretty darn dope, man. Uh, Sarah Pacelli art kind of reimagines our, you know, this is back when he was still in the Ultimate Universe. So, you know, Peter Parker had died. So look at the way they do the webbing on there. It's, I don't know if you can see that, but super dope the way they made the webbing on there. Uh, don't worry, we're going to end on a high note. <laughs> uh, this is the trifecta. I finally have them all except for that 9 5 Wizard World one. This is the Young Avengers Director's Cut Edition by Jim Chung. And uh, the 9.8 first appearance of the Young Avengers Patriot, Iron Lad, the Asgardian, Hulkland, Kate Bishop, and first Ellen Heinberg comic work. So there you go. So I have the sketch variant of this i have the regular edition of this i don't have the wizard world um 9.5 which was a weird cgc kind of special that they did but uh yeah uh, so i have the wizard world special which is a black and white sketch but they also did this weird 9.5 which is very very valuable don't not crack it if you have it you know it's a rarity my boy dark side jedi has it and I had no idea this book was going for so much until I started looking up. I said, and I had him said, well, you know what? I gotta get it graded then. This is uh, Dr. Voodoo, Avenger of the Supernatural. Dr. Voodoo becomes, Brother Voodoo becomes Dr. Voodoo. And Dr. Strange, Dr. Doom appearance, 
Doctor Strange 01 homage, of course, to Frank Bruner. Uh, interesting enough, he didn't say ten, uh, 10 after Bruner, but this is obviously homage to that book. 9.8, baby. Go look this up. This book has gotten a very uh, hot, I would say, in the last year or two. And that's the first time they kind of changed his name from Brother Voodoo to Dr. Voodoo. And I think going forward in the MCU, I think he's going to be called Dr. Voodoo, not Brother Voodoo. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm stoked for this one. This is one of my favorite covers. Not only this one, but the homage that it plays it, that it, it, uh, that it plays to the Frank Bruner Doctor Strange number one cover, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it on my Instagram when I showed... Uh, this book, as well as the Doctor Strange number one book, you know, it's a, a homage to it, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Who did the art on this? It was, hmm, Jeff DiPaolo art inside, but Billy Tan did the cover. Billy Tan is also an incredible artist. Billy Tan, Philip Tan, all the Tans are great artists. So uh, that's my haul, boys and girls. Six, 17 books, man. So, uh, yeah, it was about time. Time to go through and uh, see some other books that I have to submit. Uh, turnaround time is getting a little bit better. Shout out to my man uh, David Hong at Key Collectible Comics for submitting, uh, for uh, pressing, submitting in these for me. He was, uh, all pressers right now seem to have a, a serious, serious lag time, but he was able to uh, press my books within three days and then submit them. So if you need anybody to press your books, hit up Key Collectibles on Facebook.com or Instagram.com. Uh, and that's it, man. My 17 books. Now I can finally put them away and get rid of this gigantic box that CDC sent me. So uh, until next time, boys and girls, keep digging at them long boxes. Peace out.